Focus on the things that never change in jujitsu, the concepts. Why? By focusing on the things that never change in jujitsu, we are allow ourselves to become more adaptable in every situation that you can imagine within the sport. Your body, for the first one to two years of your training, needs to understand how to move, and then you need to get good at those movements. So stop focusing on techniques. There's a thousand different ways to do a different technique or the same technique. You're not going to memorize all of them. You are not a computer. But what you are going to remember and be able to implement on the mat, even in situations that you've never been in, are the concepts. These are things like inside position, destabilization, focusing on end of levers, attacking feet and knees, getting underhooks at all times. If you focus on these concepts, the things that never change in jujitsu, you're gonna be able to apply them to almost everything you do. Like writing a good book, we always focus on developing the outline first. That's what the concepts are. They are your outline. After you develop the outline, then you can fill the book in or you can fill your jujitsu in with the smaller details that come with techniques and optimization. But in the beginning, and I would even argue for the first one to two years, focus on concepts and getting your body to move the right way. The first concept that you need to learn and then get good at is the concept of inside positioning. Get your feet and hands inside your opponent's limbs at all times. Whether you're seated or standing or in bottom side control, we always look for inside positioning because inside positioning allows us to control our opponents easier. Remember, our opponent wants to steal inside space on us, so I take inside position on my own thighs with my elbows in order to prevent him from getting that inside space. If I give him inside control, he can control me much, much easier. Also, if I don't take inside space and I give it to him, he can take an underhook. That's why we always have to keep our elbows tucked anyways. Notice in this half guard alignment, I take inside positioning between my opponent's shoulders. I'm always keeping my hands there, never letting him steal that inside space. I think you're also going to notice I fight at end of levers, which is the next concept we'll go over. Look at my right hand. It's always reaching for the wrist or it's reaching for the elbow if I can't access the wrist or it's attacking at the shoulder in order to prevent him from being able to steal inside space. Fighting at end of levers will be the next one we go over later in this video, but just see how it's all related. Even with leg locks, we first have to get inside position in order to control our opponent's feet and knees. From there, we can start looking to enter into ashigaramis or 411s, which is the name of the position. And then we can finally look to break our opponents with heel hooks, knee bars, ankle locks, etc., etc. Look what happens in bottom side control if I keep my arms extended and I do not get inside position. When you frame on your opponent's hip, don't think of it as keeping your opponent away. Think about it as getting inside position. And even if your frames don't work initially, you can always bring your hands to your head and get inside position that way. Or if you don't want to deal with somebody putting a lot of pressure on your forearms, you can always just bring your hands to your face initially. Now, I'm not saying this is the right way to do it, but I'm trying to get the point across of always getting inside position in many different ways. In a mount alignment, my job is to get inside elbow positioning and keep my hands or my wrists away from my opponent. Never let my opponent fight at end of levers. Those are the two concepts, end of levers and always getting inside position whenever we can. Getting good at jujitsu takes time. So rather than prioritizing getting your next belt rank, focus on skill acquisition. That's gonna be better for you mentally, physically, and emotionally, because you're focused on getting better and acquiring skills. It's my belief that every mental aspect of competition, the most important of which will be confidence on stage, is a direct result of the, the accumulation of physical skills. Through competency in the sport, you will gain confidence. So it will take away all of that emotional stuff that you're dealing with. Also, another thing is acquiring skills, once again, doesn't just have to mean being able to implement techniques better on the mat. It doesn't just mean getting a higher understanding of concepts. It could also mean developing patience, developing the mental fortitude with dealing with adversity. It could mean understanding tactics better. It could mean a lot of different things. Look at where I'm padding. 
This is end of lever, not the forearm, but the knuckle line, the back of the head. This is concept number two that you have to ingrain in your brains, end of lever. We always focus on end of levers if we don't know what else to do. I forgot to mention that shoulders and hips are also end of lever. Now I said grab at the knuckle line, but if you can't reach the knuckle line, the palm of the hand or the wrist is the next best thing. The question becomes, why do we fight at end of levers? Because once again, it allows us to control our opponents easier. And if we know if our opponents are trying to grab at end of levers to control us, we never let them grab at end of levers. Does that make sense? A lever is a simple machine, and they are the basis of many tools in and around your house and work. Levers are also found in the human body. Do you see how from this back control alignment, as well as other alignments, I always fight for top position over my opponent's knuckle line as I defend? I never let them take their hands and put it over my knuckle line or wrist. We become masters at defending and attacking at end of levers. If you've watched it up to this part and you still don't know what's going on, let me try it like this. If our whole objective is to extend, isolate, and immobilize a limb, that means not all body parts are created equal because some body parts will give us more leverage to do so. If you're attacking upper body or defending at upper body, you target elbows, wrists, and shoulders. If you are defending or attacking at lower body, you target feet, knees, and hips. If the knuckles and the wrists are closest to you, grab that. If the elbow is closest to you, grab that. If the shoulder is closest to you, grab that. If you can grab all three, try to grab two out of the three. Same goes to the lower body. Just remember, the elbow and the shoulders are joints that work in synergy. The knees and the hips are joints that work in synergy. If you control the elbow and the knees, you control the hips and the shoulders to a certain extent. These are your objectives or your blueprint as you are rolling. We attack feet and knees in order to access the hips. We attack wrists and elbows in order to access the shoulder line. Once we get to the shoulders or hips, then we try to look to get chest to chest or chest to back and our defender has to make sure we don't get here. While you're watching me escape this body triangle, you probably think I'm doing 65,000 different things. I'm literally following like two or three concepts that I understand at a high level. That's it. Maybe you're even wondering how you go about practicing these concepts. You play games. Do you notice in every clip you've seen, me and my opponent only have one objective and one task. Whoever wins that task wins the game. For example, me and Maxim are about to play another seated guard alignment. If I get him to post hands on the mat, I win. If he gets my back on the floor, he wins. And that's how we're going about practicing these concepts in real time. Same thing with this quarter guard alignment. If I destabilize him to his hands or his hips, I win. If he frees his knee and foot, he wins. Look at my underhook and look at how I destabilize him to his hands. Underhook, underhook, underhook. Same rules apply to Maxime. His job is to get me to post to my hands. Did you see what he did with his right foot? If not, replay it. Pay attention to my hands and my feet and pay attention to how my feet and my hands target the back of Maxime's knee and his feet at all times. That's another concept that I could go over and talk about in this video, but instead I'm going to show you. And there's many more concepts that I can go over, but instead we will save those for future videos. Just pay attention to my footwork and my foot placement and my hand placement, and you'll see at the end of the day, if I'm being super general, I'm just making and maintaining connections with my hands and feet. But if I'm being even more specific, I'm making and maintaining connections with my hands and feet at all times on specific areas of my opponent's body. Feet and knees. That's my favorite concept. Hands and feet, peel them, destabilize. Okay. Good, Sasha. Keep your balance here. Keep that left foot. Keep the left foot away from him. Good. Nice, Sasha. Nice. That's a reset. That's a reset. That was beautiful work, both of you. That was really good. Use your legs and feet like hands. Okay. You don't have feet anymore. You don't have thighs. You have hands. Good. That's it.
Perfect. And just remember everyone, acquiring and getting good at skills takes time. So you're going to make a lot of mistakes. Get used to it. And it's okay to be discouraged, to get emotional, to hate yourself a bit, to feel like utter garbage, to feel humiliated, but that's part of the process. So validate your feelings, cry, punch a wall, don't punch a wall, do what you need to do in a healthy way to let your feelings out and then get back to work and focus on acquiring skills. Because I can guarantee you, if you have this mentality or you create this mentality, you are gonna have a lot of success in jujitsu years down the line. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you check the link in the bio, you can get access to our free newsletter and I think you're gonna enjoy it. P.S. Stop doing stupid shit like rolling toll holds or Imanari rolls. They're only gonna help you out in the short term a little bit and then they're gonna hurt your long-term progress.